In this video, we're going to walk through how to complete a basic pension plan worksheet without prior service costs. We're given the following information related to the grouper group for the year 2017. We're told our beginning plan assets on January 1, 2017 are $476,200. Our beginning projected benefit obligation is also $476,200. So notice our plan is neither overfunded nor underfunded. We've got an 8% settlement rate. That's, again, the interest rate we apply to our pension benefit obligation. Our current period service costs are $39,700. Our current period contributions, which will increase fund assets, are $26,000. Our expected is equal to our actual return on plan assets, and that's $44,900. And we've paid $31,700 to our retirees. Let's go ahead and begin uh, completing our worksheet. Our ending balance for our pension benefit obligation for 2000, uh, December 31st, 2016 was the 476200 that was given. We were given the plan assets. And again, our pension plan was neither overfunded nor underfunded. Our projected obligations equal our plan assets. In this problem, we're assuming we have no prior service period service costs. So our beginning balances on January 1, 2017 are exactly equal to our ending balances 2016. Next, let's take a look at our service cost. We're told our service cost is $30,700. And again, that's the present value of future benefits that employees have earned during the period. And notice our service cost that increases our projected benefit obligation. We are calculating our interest cost. Our interest cost is that 8% settlement rate times our beginning pension benefit obligation of 47,000, sorry, $476,200 for right there. And that interest cost increases our projected benefit obligation. Next, we are told that our actual pension return is $44,900. Our actual return will increase our plan assets. We have no amortization of prior period service cost. Our contributions during the period, we were told, are um, $26,000. And again, our contributions will increase our plan assets. In terms of benefits that we're paying, we are told that we are paying $31,700 in benefits. Those, of course, reduce our future projected benefit obligation because we've now paid some of those obligations and we've paid them out of pension plan assets. So those will reduce our pension plan assets. Let's go ahead and calculate our pension expense for the period. Our total pension expense for the period is our current period service cost, which was the $39,700, plus our interest cost of $38,096, plus the amortization of any prior period service cost, which in this case was zero. And then, of course, we deduct from that any actual return earned on our pension um, fund assets, which was $44,900. So our pension expense is $32,896 and we are going to record that, of course, as we record all expenses, with a debit to pension expense. We paid $26,000 in cash. In other words, we contributed cash to our pension fund assets. So companies' assets, cash, went down by $26,000. Again, recall, the pension benefit obligations and the assets of the pension plan are a separate legal entity. Our current pension liability then will be um, $6,896, and that's simply that change in pension expenses and our pension assets, and we can prove that when we calculate our ending uh, fund assets and balance assets and liabilities. So again, we had zero accumulated comprehensive income gain or loss related to our pension fund. 
because we had no prior period service cost. Our pension liability is summed down to $6,896, and hopefully that will equal our pension plan assets and our, our pension plan obligations minus our pension plan assets. Our pension plan um, obligations, the ending balance, is that beginning balance of $476,200 plus uh, $39,700 plus the $38,096 for the interest cost. We had no um, amortization of prior period service cost, and then we deducted the benefits that we paid. Our pension plan assets are the beginning balance, 476200 plus our return, which was 44900 uh, plus any contributions that we've made during the period, which were 26000 and we subtract the benefits paid of 31700 And we can see that our pension liability on our books equals the pension fund obligation minus our pension fund assets. Let's go ahead and answer a few additional questions. What's our balance of our pension asset liability in our books and financial statements? That was the $6,896,000. Uh, we said since we have a our pension plan, plan obligations are greater than our pension plan assets, we record that as a net liability in our books. If assets were greater, we would have pension assets, a net pension asset on our financial statements. Again, our pension plan is underfunded because the projected benefit obligations are greater than our pension plan, plan assets. Now let's go ahead and assume that our pension plan assets um, were $1,000 higher than pension plan liabilities. How would that change our ending um, pension asset liability balance? We simply would have decreased our liability by five thousand sorry by a thousand dollars to five thousand eight hundred and ninety six dollars.